What a day, what a day. I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for putting together this event today. Because me personally, this topic of racism is something really dear to my heart. And it saddens me that in the Muslim community, this issue of racism is hardly addressed. Mm -hmm. Me being a Muslim for nine years, Alhamdulillah, and I praise Allah for that, this topic of racism has affected me from know, so many different angles. But like I said, from the Muslim community, it's a topic that is hardly addressed. Mm -hmm. Now, before I came to Islam, I was heavily involved in the street life. I grew up on a council estate, and as many of you know, growing up on a council estate, it does certain things to your mind. And as a young black person living on a council estate, my goals and ambitions was to get off this block. That was my dream, to get off this block. And growing up watching your favorite rappers and singers and what have you, you start to think to yourself, when you see these entertainment videos, three minutes, all you see is happiness. Yes. You see your role models with pretty women, expensive cars, jewelry, big houses. And me as a person growing up in a cancer estate, seeing my money through my house, so, Allah, you're just thinking, you know what, I need these things for myself to have this happiness. So when I was in school, instead of me focusing on my education, I was more dilly-dallying, figuring out ways how I'm going to make money. Mm -hmm. Now, when I left school, my family were very disappointed with me. I wasn't born in this country, so I was fortunate to be able to go through the school system and have free education. So my parents were disappointed that I left school with no qualifications. So when I went to college, I really thought bad, and I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to change for my parents' sake and try and make ends meet by taking my school in serious. So I'd say I was in college for about, I'd done the first year, and then when it got to the second year, the rules started caving in on me, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Going back to my estate every day, seeing all my friends making money, I'm coming on the block with my bags, and I'm seeing my friends, you know, with the latest clothes, jewelry and whatnot, and every day, slowly but surely, my friends are saying to me, what are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? What are you gonna do? Go college, get you, go uni, get a degree, or work in somewhere like being you? And I'm not belated in working in being you, but when you're on a cancer estate and you've got your friends earning a certain amount of money, it's not something that you want to aspire to be like. Mm -hmm. So after a bit of time of convincing, I said to myself, you know what, I don't no longer want to you know, involve myself in education, so I started dedicating my life to the street life. Now after a few years of doing certain things on the street, I started having all the things that I wanted, whereby I got to the stage where I was buying watches for like £10,000, you know, buying cars for a value like fifty thousand pounds or whatnot, and going, going, you know, places like Selfridges, buying jackets nine hundred pounds, and living a lifestyle that I always dreamed to live. But one of the things was always missing was the happiness, mm -hmm. because, like I said, my brothers and sisters in Islam and my brothers and sisters in humanity, when I was watching these videos, I saw happy faces. Mm -hmm. I saw people, you know, living a certain life, living a dream. But when I started to um, have all these luxuries, mm -hmm. I was like, where's the happiness? I couldn't feel it. So it got to a stage in my life where many people didn't know, slowly but surely, I was starting to drift into depression. Because I used to think to myself, boy, I've got money, I've got jewelry, I've got women chasing, I've got the things that I always wanted, so why am I not happy? Mm -hmm. So what I started to do, I started to turn to drugs. Start drinking, smoking a lot because I never used to like to think about it. Because when I used to think a lot, that's when I used to get really depressed. Mm -hmm. Now I had a friend of mine, you know, we we stopped talking for a while because obviously I was doing certain things and he was on the other side of the border from where I live. And I'll never forget this day, I was on my estate, one of my friends came and called me by the name of used to call me and he comes to us. You know your friend so and so. He became a Muslim. I'm like, what? He became a Muslim. I was like, wait, how can a black man become an Asian? <laughs> <laughs> so I was really confused. I was like, no, he's black. <laughs> how can he become a Muslim? A black person can't be a Muslim. He's an Asian way of life, Asian religion. So I was pretty, I was pretty much confused. So I kind of laughed it off and said, nah, you can't be serious. I'm not really taking this too serious. Anyway, cut a long story short, a couple of months went by. I used to think about it a lot. So I decided to call this individual. I said, you know what? Let me, let me, let's, let's meet. I, I want to see what's really going on. 
So it was once hot summer holiday, me and my friend were driving up and down. So we went to meet this individual. He was a close friend of mine before, but because of the certain things I was doing, we never used to, you know, spend a lot of time anymore. So I never forget, I pulled up into the state, I was driving around and I was holding on, he's like, where are you? And he's like, just keep driving around. I was thinking, this is pretty strange. It seemed like a bit of a setup, but obviously, I was really close to this individual before I didn't think he was going to bring any harm to me. Anyway, as I got into the bottom of the state, the first thing I saw was five individuals wearing white dresses. So I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I was like, oh. but I could, to be honest with you, I was just laughing at that. <laughs> I was laughing because it was weird. So I got out of the car and I'm like, yo, what you taking this thing too serious. I'm Muslim now, I'm this and that. I was just, in the back of my head, I was like, you know what, this is mental. I don't know, I don't know what these individuals are doing. So after that meeting, just cut ties for a while. So I'd say roughly about a year went by, and then one of the one of the guys he was with that day, he became a Muslim. I knew him before Islam. So I used to get certain jewelry, like expensive watches, and he had a good link in Hatton Garden, whereby he could get rid of these watches for me. So we started getting back in contact again, and I used to spend some days with him because obviously we're making money together now. And what puzzled me was their behaviour, the way they, you know, their characteristics, their mannerisms completely changed. Because before Islam, I couldn't end a sentence without swearing. Mm-hmm. I was a very ignorant individual, to be honest with you. I'm not going on, let me not fool with any of you. I'm not going on like I was the baddest man in town. I wasn't, you understand? But I had my stages, like I think the majority of us growing up in that kind of community had. And one of the things that amazed me was their characteristics, their mannerism, how they used to conduct themselves, how if I would swear around them and say, listen, don't speak like that. And they were really firm upon what they were saying. You know, for example, we'll be walking on the street and I might see a girl like, I'm going like to move to her. They're like, listen, you can't do them type of things. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do them type of things? What do you mean? Like, listen, man, you can't treat women like that. And then it started to dream into my head that, right, these individuals are really changed. This is not phase, they're really, you know, living a different life. Now, cut a long story short, more months went by, they used to tell me about Islam, but every time they used to tell me about Islam, I never used to listen. They used to go in one ear and out the other. But I used to pay attention to their behaviour and how they used to conduct themselves. Now, I'll never forget this day, I was in a nightclub, Ministry of Sound, Elephant and Castle in London, enjoying myself, me and a load of my friends were just having fun. And my phone kept ringing. I got about 20 minutes calls from one of these, these guys who became Muslim. I said to myself, I'm in the club, I'm suing the number come up. I'm like, why is this guy phoning me? It's like 2 in the morning, why are they phoning me? But at the same time, when you come from the street, like, someone's calling your phone at that time, Maybe something's going down, maybe something's happened. So at the back of my mind, I didn't want to pick up the phone because I know they're going to start talking. But at the same time, I was thinking, obviously, even though they're Muslim, they're still my friends. And I've got some kind of, you know, loyalty to them. Maybe they need me for some type of help. So I picked up the phone. I'm like, yeah, what's happening? So my friend goes, where are you? I goes, I'm in ministry. He goes, is it? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I just wanted to tell you something. He goes, what? And I goes, what? Since you die in that nightclub, you're going to hell. Put the phone down. <laughs> so listen, now this is not even funny because I'm out of my mind this time. I'm in this nightclub, but my brain is gone. But everything I took to get my brain to that level, it went. And I was probably thinking, and my friends were like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, nothing. And all night I was, you know, I was in the club, but they ruined my night. <laughs> now the following morning, I found my friend. Two o'clock in the morning, talking about this, some guy, you know, what's all this? Why are you following? Why are you, why are you abusing me like this? He's like, nah, I've had enough. I'll be patient with you. I'm trying to give you advice. I'm good for you, so and so. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to listen today. Tell me about this one. Now, one of the things what really touched me when they started talking about death, because me, before Islam, this is a topic that I don't like talking about. I've been to many funerals. Many of my friends have died in the street through gun crime or whatnot. But at the same time, it wasn't something that I used to like talking about. So when they started talking about death, what happens when you die? What happens when you get in a grave? What happens on the day of judgment? It's like a puzzle. And I say to myself, you know what? This is, this is deep. This is deep because me as an individual before, when it comes to death, I don't think about these things. I put it in the back of my mind. I used to have that kind of opinion whereby when death comes to me, it comes to me. Let me not worry about it. It's not something that I'm focusing on. But these individuals, they used to focus on death a lot. And I remember one of the brothers said to me, uh, a statement of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, a wise person is someone who contemplates death all the time. When he said this statement, it makes sense to me because it's true. Because at the end of the day, we can dilly dally, we can argue about anything, but 
Sorry, sorry. We can dig it down and argue about anything, but I don't think you will come across two people who will argue about whether they're going to die or not. You will never come across anyone like that. So when they got to this topic, it was something that, you know, kind of really penetrated my mind. It made me think more, and I said to myself, you know what? What is my life all about? I've got money, I've got jewelry, I'm going higher than I'm, I'm living my life, but I'm not happy. There must be more to life than this. What is my life about? Is my purpose of life just to, you know, have money, like women, go and party, try and buy houses and this stuff? That it doesn't make no sense to me. So the more they started telling me about it slowly, the more I started looking into it. I'm gonna cut the story short because at the end of the day we've got lack of time. But like I said, the more they started telling me about death and telling me what Islam represents, believing in one God, not associating partners with God, directing your worship to God only, you don't go through a second person, a third person, it made sense to me, you know, to have one one creator, not the creators to you, the creators free, or have to go through this person to get to my creator. When you pray, you pray straight to God. I don't pray to Jesus or whatnot. And I'm not trying to, you know, disrespect anyone who has them type of beliefs, but for me, it's not something I could ever really digest. That's me personally. And another thing, growing up, my mom's a Christian. And I just found it strange that to see a poster in my house with a white guy and long hair, I couldn't really digest that, to be honest with you. So for me, Christianity was never really something that, you know, I would say that I was a punk. Like someone would ask my religion, I would say I'm Christian because of my family. So after more researching and looking, looking into the uh, understanding of Islam, then I became a Muslim. Now, one of the things that I, I checked before I became a Muslim, I wanted to know the position as a black person as a Muslim. Because, like I said to you, when I first heard about Islam, I thought it was an Asian religion, I thought it was an Asian way of life. So I started realizing that, you know, in Islam, there's many prophets, there's many messengers, there was people close to the prophet, peace be upon him, who were the same complexion as myself. So I said, that was really interesting to me, because one of, the, one of the key things about Islam, when I read the sermon of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, there's no difference between a black man and a white man. And that's, for me, I don't know about anyone else, that's a strong statement to me. Do you understand? Especially in the society that I grew up in, for a prophet, for a messenger to say there's no difference between a black man and a white man, the only difference between us is through the good deeds that we do. I said, you know what, this is something I can get down with. This is something that I can, you know, really adapt to and believe. So when I became a Muslim, my mind, my, my frame of mind was, there's no color in Islam. And I'm going to be honest with you, before I came to Islam, I was racist. Straight up and down. I'm not gonna be shy to say it. I was very racist. If he wasn't black, I wasn't feeling him. I'll be honest with you. But when I came to Islam and I learned how serious of a sin this is in the religion of Islam, it was a chance for me to purify myself. So one of the things what I noticed even myself when I became a Muslim, all the time I was in the Asian community. I'm going to the food shops now. Never before I eat in the Asian shops. Never. <laughs> but when I come to Islam, I'm very young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating very early. I'm eating I'm drinking milk was pink. <laughs> 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 everything, everything changed for me because now I've become open-minded. Before I wasn't open-minded. I'm just going to the yard shop. That's my kind of, you know, eat the food that we know. But now as a Muslim, I'm going to different food shops. I'm eating different food. And like I said, I'm, drink, I'm drinking different drinks as well. You understand? But the more I started going into the Muslim community, I started to realize, wait a minute. Something came right. Something came right. This. There's something going on here, do you understand? Mm-hmm. Especially when, you know, I'll be honest with you, when I first became Muslim, you know, I used to dress wasn't really appropriate, to be honest, but as a new Muslim, I don't know. And you go into certain mosques and, you know, into certain community centers, the treatment that you get from some of the uncles and that, it was really disgusting, to be honest with you. Now, subhanAllah, when we talk about this topic of racism, like I said, I think it's such an important topic, and I'm happy, alhamdulillah, I'm glad that I'm here and the Muslims are put on this event. Because like I said, we have this disease in our community. Mm-hmm. And we shouldn't be shy to speak about it. We should be of the people who can say, you know what, we've got flaws, we've got mistakes, and we should try and purify ourselves from this. Because we have to remember, the religion of Islam is perfect, but the Muslims are not. Mm-hmm. And for many Muslims, it's hard for them to understand that. And for many more Muslims. That's why any time a Muslim does something, Islam gets blamed. And I think that's unfair. Do mm-hmm. you understand? Because if I was to pick up a gun right now, and I go and kill someone, it's me. Yeah, my religion is what I believe for. It's me who would have done that. Actually, the whole, the whole, the whole of the, uh, the Muslim shouldn't be blamed for that. And that's one of the things that we notice amongst the Muslims. If you go in the community, we have a lot of problems, but we don't like to address it. But we're quick to address things what's outside our community. And I think this is really wrong. 
Now, like I said, the topic of racism is a big problem. Now, many brothers and sisters have suffered, have suffered uh, racism in the Muslim community because many of us might have been born into Islam, but we don't understand some of us have this disease in our heart. Because for me, I don't find it normal that when, a, when an individual gets angry, he starts saying racist stuff. That's not normal to me. Do you understand? When I'm, I'm not going to lie, if I was angry and I saw someone, I would say things to, you know, upset that individual. I might say things that was personal to him. I would have started bringing his race and stuff like that. I don't find that as a normal, a normal way to behave, a normal way to conduct yourself when you're angry. That's why I say, and I'll say it openly, many people in the Muslim community have this disease. And I think as a Muslim community, we need to come together and stand up and kick racism out. Because we know the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an individual who would never have stood for this. And first and foremost, we have to remember Allah SWT, the creator of the heavens and the earth, would never accept an individual who comes with this type of uh, ideology, this type of understanding, whereby he thinks his skin, his culture, his background is better than others. So because of lack of time, I'm going to cut it there. We pray and ask Allah SWT to guide us to what is good. And alhamdulillah, I'm happy to see many people come together to, for this great event and for us to address this issue. Because like I said, <coughs> this is something that was very dear to my heart. And I'm happy that we've come together as a community, even though I'm not from Birmingham, but still we're community. <laughs> and we're trying to, you know, kick this issue out because it's a, it's a problem that affects many people in our community, in our community, and outside our community. <coughs> Anything good I said is from Allah SWT. Anything bad I said is from me and the Shaykh. Thank you.